Today I'm going to start by recapping what you learned in the GeoGebra assignment you did for section 7.2 the other day. And then uh, after that we're going to go into section 7.3. So you get a couple of them here today. Uh, wherever you're keeping your notes, you can put this into your notes. Oops, I got the wrong day. Today's Thursday. Thursday the 18th, and we're going to start with section 7.2. And let's start off with similar polygons. Similar polygons are polygons that have the same shape, but they don't necessarily have to be the same size. One could be bigger than the other. They could be the same size, but typically one is bigger than the other. So same shape, but not necessarily the same size. You can kind of think of that as, say I had a little triangle here. If I took it to a copy machine and blew it up, made it bigger. Those would be similar figures. They're the same shape, but they're different sizes. And we have a symbol we're going to use for similar. If you remember uh, when we did congruence, we had an equal sign with a little squiggly line above the equal sign. For similar, you're just going to have the little squiggly line. So you'll see that occasionally as we go through uh, chapter 7. That squiggly line means they are similar to each other. And here is the big thing. When we have similar polygons, there's two things that we have to remember will always happen on similar polygons. The first one is their corresponding angles will be congruent. That's the easy one to remember. The one that's a little harder to remember is the corresponding sides. Corresponding sides will be proportional. And as you guys were filling out the uh, GeoGebra assignment, some of you used the word proportional, some of you said they had the same ratio. Those two are the same thing. Typically in geometry, we'll call it proportional when they have the same ratio. But those two are the same thing. <clears throat> so let's start off kind of like we did back when we did uh, congruent triangles. We're going to do some similar triangles this time. So let's say they tell us that triangle FGH is similar to triangle JKL. And they're going to give us a picture of it over here. FGH is going to be the smaller one, and then the bigger one is going to be JKL. And then on this one, they're going to have us do two things. And I'm going to kind of separate them here. Over here on the left, they're going to have us list the congruent angles. So let's just start with that, and then we'll come to the second part. Now, if you go back to what we said about similar polygons, their corresponding angles are congruent. And if you remember back to congruent triangles back at first semester, we told you that the order they give you the letters will match up your corresponding parts for you. Same thing's going to happen here. F and J are the first letters. That means they're going to match up with each other. And like we said here, when the figures, figures are similar, the corresponding angles will be congruent. So F and J are going to be congruent to each other. So there's one of my sets of congruent angles. F's congruent to J. And then we'll just keep going in order here. G and K are the middle letters. That means those two match up. Angle G would be congruent to angle K. And then your last letters are H and L. That means those two, whoops, those two are going to be congruent to each other. They match up. H is congruent to L. So 
So there's our uh, sets of corresponding angles that are congruent to each other. And then the second thing they're going to have us do is write a proportion. And I'm going to stop at that point, because if you remember, we said that corresponding sides are going to be proportional. So we're going to write a proportion. And the way the book describes this here, they're going to have us uh, write a proportion that relates the corresponding sides. <clears throat> and as I go to set this up, what I'm going to do is start with a proportion. Now what you're used to seeing is a proportion is two fractions that are equal to each other. We're going to have three sets of corresponding sides, so we're going to end up making this a proportion with three fractions in it. But let's just start with two. Now again, when you go to do this, you can use the order of the letters to do it, or you can use the uh, match them up using the angle marks that we have on our picture. I'm going to kind of show you both ways. I'm going to start with the first two letters on the first triangle. First triangle, the first two letters are FG. FG is going to match up with JK. That's the first two letters on the second triangle. I'm going to put those one above the other. <clears throat> and then if you look at your picture, you can see they match up also. FG falls between one and two marks. So does JK over here. Now that ratio right there, FG to JK, it's going to equal the uh, other sets of corresponding sides. So let's just keep going here. Let's go to uh, this, the last two letters. Last two letters of this triangle are GH and KL. So I'm going to put GH over KL. Again, I can use the, the order of the letters to do that. Or you can look at your angle marks. GH falls between two and three marks. So does KL. That right there is a proportion that relates two sets of corresponding sides. On a triangle, we're going to have three sets of corresponding sides. So I'm going to go ahead and mark another part of our ratio here. And the two letters I didn't use are the middle, uh, no, the first and the last letters. FH on this triangle and JL on this triangle. They're going to have the same ratio as the other sets of sides. FG falls between one and two. So does J. Oh, what did I do wrong here? I wanted FH there, didn't I? Change that FG to an FH. FH is first and last letters. JL are the first and last letters. FH falls between one and three angle marks. So does JL, one and three angle marks. So there's your proportion to match those up. So again, probably the easiest way to do that, remember when they give you the similarity statement, that's what this is called here, is a similarity statement. The order of the letters will match up your corresponding parts for you. All right, next we have a definition, a scale factor. And the scale factor is going to be that ratio when you line up your corresponding parts, your corresponding sides. Eventually what's going to happen here when they give us these pictures is they're going to tell us how long the sides are. And so we'll use these ratios to come up with what we call a scale factor. If I found the ratio of these two sets of corresponding sides, that would be the scale factor. So let's show you an example of how this works. Let's say I'll call this letter A. <clears throat> let's say they give us two pictures. We have a rectangle here. We'll call this A, B, C, D. And like I told you before, they're going to give you the lengths of some of these sides. C, D is going to have a length of 10. B, C is going to have a length of 8. 
And then we're going to have one that's a little bigger next to it, also a rectangle. It's JKLM. And it's going to have sides of 12 and 15. All right, and with this one, they're going to have us ask. If, they're going to ask us a few different questions here. First one is they're going to ask if the figures are similar. Second thing, if they are similar, they're going to have us write a similarity statement. And once again, just to kind of take you back to what a similarity statement is, this is a similarity statement. We're going to say that the two figures are similar, and we're going to put the letters in order to match up their corresponding parts. And then the last thing, we're going to write the scale factor. And again, the scale factor is going to be that ratio of a set of corresponding sides. All right, start this one off. First of all, since they told us uh, these things are rectangles here, I know that if the bottom side here is 10, the top's going to be 10. If the right hand side is 8, the left hand side's going to be 8. Same thing over here. If the bottom's 15, the top's 15. If the right is 12, the left is 12. And now we want to figure out if they are similar to each other. So in order to be similar, two things have to happen. Corresponding angles have to be congruent. Well, if it's a rectangle, which these are, we told you that at the beginning of the problem here, that this is a rectangle, and then all of your angles are going to be right angles. So the angles do match up with each other. All the corresponding angles are congruent. They're all right angles. The other thing that has to happen is all of your corresponding sides have to be proportional. In other words, they have to have the same ratio. So what I'm going to come down here and do is see if those sides have the same ratio. So let's match up our corresponding sides. We've got a 10 and a 15 for the top sides. I'm going to take those two. 10 and 15 would reduce. They can both be divided by 5. That would get you down to 2 thirds. If you look at the bottom two sides, they're the exact same thing, 10 and 15. So they'll also reduce to 2 thirds. Now if I go with the left hand sides, I've got 8 and 12. When I make a ratio out of those, if you divide both those by 4, you get 2 thirds. Same thing would happen with these two, 8 and 12. They would also reduce to 2 thirds. So we've shown that all of the, si all of the uh, corresponding angles are congruent, and we've shown all the corresponding sides are proportional. They have the same ratio. So our answer here would be yes, they are similar. The similarity statement, we would put the, orders, uh, put the order of the letters in the exact same order. Now this one's not a triangle, so I don't have a symbol to put in front of it, but I'm going to call the left-hand figure A, B, C, D. When it's a rectangle, I can just do four letters to represent that. And then I'm going to put the similar figure or similar uh, symbol in between them and match it up over here. If I went A, B, C, D, I would have to go J, K, L, M over here. And there's your similarity statement. And then the scale factor part we've already done. If you go back to your definition, scale factor is the ratio of the corresponding sides of your similar figures. You go back, we did the ratio. Both of the sets of sides, or all of your sets of sides here, had a ratio of 2 to 3, or 2 thirds. Our scale factor is 2 thirds. All right, kind of a lot of stuff thrown in there. That's the first way that's going to be presented to you. Now, there's a second way, which is a little bit. Uh, 
probably a little bit less work. This one they're just going to have you find missing variables like x and y. So directions will tell you to find x and y. And usually when we do these problems we're going to have triangles, so I'm going to go back to triangles. And they're going to give us a similarity statement here. They're going to tell us that triangle JLM is similar to triangle QST. And they're going to give us a picture to go with it. We've got a couple triangles. We'll put uh, JLM, we'll put over here on the left. And we'll have a smaller triangle over here on the right. We'll call this one QST. And they want us to find X and Y, so they have to give us the X and Y. Um, let's see, the Y is going to be over here on side JL. It's going to be 3Y minus 2. The X is going to be part of side ML. It's 6X minus 3. And then our other side here on that triangle is 4. And the smaller triangle over here, they're just going to give us the sides. we got a 2, a 3, and a 5. And that's all we need in order to find what x and y are. So the key thing to remember here, they're telling us, they're giving us a similarity statement here. That's going to line up our corresponding parts. So I'm going to start with that. J and Q are the first letters. And they're going to be congruent. L and S are the second letters, so they're going to be congruent. And M and T are the third ones, they're going to be congruent. That's the first part of your similar figures. Corresponding angles are always congruent to each other. And then we can use those angle markings to match up our, our, our parts that we're going to try to uh, put together for our proportion. So that's the second part. Anytime you have similar figures, your corresponding sides are proportional. Over here, I'm going to set up a proportion. Two fractions equal to each other. And then I'm going to keep it simple. Since I have a figure on the left, any of those numbers that I put, any of those sides I use, I'm going to keep on the left. Figure on the right, any of those numbers I use, I'm going to keep on the right. And we'll just kind of match things up that way. So let's start. We want to find x and y. Here's x. Let's start with that part. The 6x minus 3 comes from the left-hand figure, so I'm going to keep it on the left of my proportion. It falls between 2 and 3 angle marks. So I'm going to match that up over here on the right-hand side. The one that falls between 2 and 3 there's two and three marks, that's going to be the three. Six x minus three and three will match up with each other. And again, since the three comes from the right hand figure, I'm going to keep it on the right of my proportion. Now for my other set of sides, I could either go with three y minus two or four. If I go with three y minus two, then I'm going to have two variables in my proportion. And we don't know how yet to solve proportions if you have two variables. So rather than doing that, I'm going to go with the four. The 4 falls between 1 and 3 marks. If I come over here, the QT, those are the 1 and the 3 marks. That's a 2. The 4 and the 2 will match up with each other. Again, since the 4 was from the left-hand figure, I'm going to keep it on the left. 2 comes from the right-hand figure, so I'm going to keep it on the right. And that's the hard part. Once you've done that, now it's just solving a proportion. It's just cross-multiplying. 6x minus 3 times 2. Once again, that 6x minus 3 we're going to treat as a quantity, so we'll put parentheses around it. 3 times 4 is 12. Once you got your parentheses around there, you can distribute your 2. 2 times 6x is 12x. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. If we add the 6 over here, we're going to get 18. And dividing by 12, we get 18 over 12. 18 and 12 can be divided by 6. That'd get you to 3 over 2. Or you could write that as 1.5. Either of those two answers would be fine. So that took care of the x. Now I still got to go get the y. Here's the y. We're going to do the exact same process. Set up a proportion. Numbers from the left, I'm going to keep on the left. Numbers from the right, I'm going to keep on the right. We need the 3y minus 2. 
it falls between one and two marks. And that will match up with the five over here. It falls between one and two. And then I've already used four and two, so I'm gonna go ahead and use those again. Four and two match up with each other. Four falls between one and three. So does the two, it falls between one and three. And then same exact process, cross multiply. Distribute your two to get six y minus four. If we add the four over there, we get 24. And then dividing by six, y is gonna equal three. And a lot of times you'll get decimals. Sometimes you're going to get whole numbers like we did here, but more often than not, you're going to end up with decimals. So don't be surprised when you're doing the homework on this if you end up with decimals. Okay, that takes care of section two. Now I'm going to take you to section three. And I'm going to start a new paper here. You can just keep going where you're at in your notebook. Here's seven three. <clears throat> seven three has three theorems. And uh, these three theorems, we're just going to remember by name, so we'll make it real simple. The first one is AA similarity. And this is going to remind you a lot of when we did congruent triangles back in, I think it was chapter two. When you have the two A's there, that stands for angle, angle. And here's basically what happens with this. I'll do it as a picture. Since we're going to do triangles the most, well, this is going to happen. These theorems are for triangles, but we're going to see triangles the most, so we'll definitely do pictures of triangles. With angle-angle similarity, what this theorem is going to say is that if two, tri uh, if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then those triangles are similar. Here's what it looks like in picture we got to get two sets of angles congruent to each other. So there's one set of angles. Here's a second set of angles. If I can get two sets of angles congruent to each other, then I can say the triangles are similar by angle-angle similarity. So here it is in parentheses what's happening here. We're getting two sets of congruent angles. If you get two sets of congruent angles on the two triangles, then they are similar to each other. Now, if that one looked familiar, this one will too. SSS similarity. SSS is going to stand for side, side, side. And I'm going to do my triangles a little differently here. Here's the smaller one, here's the bigger one. And this one stands for side, side, side similarity. So if you think back to what we said about uh, similar figures, if, they're sim if the triangles are similar or the figures are similar, their corresponding sides will be proportional. So what we need here is to get all three sets of sides to be proportional. Or another way of saying that is they all have the same ratio. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Three sets of proportional sides. And again, I'm going to put same ratio in parentheses. Proportional means they have the same ratio. So if you can get all three sets of sides to have the exact same ratio, then the sides or then the uh, triangles are similar. Here's what it would look like on a picture. Let's, uh, I'm just going to pick a ratio here. I'm going to say that this second triangle is twice the size of the first one. So if this side here was a 4, if that's twice as big as this one, its corresponding side would be a 2. That one is twice as big as that one, ratio of 2 to 1. If I can get all of those sides to have a ratio of 2 to 1, then I could say the triangles are similar by side, side, side similarity. So if this side over here was a 6, in order to keep a 2 to 1 ratio, this side would have to be 12. 12 is twice as big as 6. If this side was a 10, it's going to be twice as big as this one. 
which is 5. All three sets of sides here have a ratio of 2 to 1. The numbers on the right-hand side are twice as big as the numbers on the left. That means they all have the same ratio, which makes them proportional, which means these triangles are similar by side, side, side similarity. And then our final one is SAS similarity, kind of a combination of the previous two. And we'll do it with a picture again. This time I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to have the bigger one on the left, smaller one on the right. And on this one, we're going to have two sets of sides. So those two sets of sides, again, to be similar, they have to be proportional. Make my parentheses a little bigger there. We're going to have two sets of proportional sides. That takes care of the two S's. And then the angles in between them, the included angles, have to be in, uh, congruent to each other. Because in similarity, your angles are congruent to each other. Sides are proportional. Angles are congruent. And that's kind of the whole key to sections two and three, if you can remember that. Similarity, your sides will be proportional, your angles will be congruent to each other. Let's start with a set of proportional sides. Last time I did a ratio of two to one, let's do a ratio of three to one. So my bigger triangle is here, smaller triangle is here. Let's do a ratio of three to one. Let's say that this side is 15. That's gonna be three times as big as over here. Its corresponding side would have to be a five. 15 over 5, if you reduce that, you get 3 over 1. And let's go with this side down here. We'll call it a 9. In order to keep a ratio of 3 to 1, this side would have to be 3. 9 to 3, if you reduce that, gives you a ratio of 3 to 1. So we've got our two sets of sides that have the same ratio. That means they're proportional. And then we need the included angles to be a congruent. Your included angles are in between those two sets of proportional sides. That's this angle and this angle. And again, angles on similar figures will be congruent. Sides will be proportional. If you get a setup like this, you can say the triangles are similar by side, angle, side, similarity. And I believe there's a couple different ways they're gonna show this to you. A few different ways. And we'll start with this one. Starting over here with section three, so I'll call this letter A. It wants to know if the triangles are similar. And kind of like we did last time, if so, write a similarity statement. And they're also going to tell you to explain. And the explanation part can be as simple as one of these three similarity uh, theorems. Okay, here's the picture that's going to go with it. On this picture, and they're going to call our vertices R, X, S, T, and W. And also in the picture, they're going to tell us that Rx is parallel to Tw. And we have to figure out if the triangles are similar. If they are, we'll write a similarity statement, and we'll explain our reasoning why. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to start by just looking at the picture. First thing I notice when I look at this picture is we've got some angles, some vertical angles right here that are congruent. So just like earlier this year, anytime you see vertical angles, you can automatically mark them as congruent to each other because they're always congruent. And then if I go to my parallel lines, 
Just like last chapter when we were doing proofs, if your lines are parallel, we can always look for alternate interior angles. So these two lines are parallel, that's going to make these two alternate interior angles congruent. And that's really all the further I have to go, but I could also do it with these two angles. Since these lines are parallel, these two alternate interior angles are congruent. What I end up doing here is getting three sets of congruent angles. Now, if you go back to your first theorem, you only need two sets of congruent angles. So I could say, yes, these two are similar to each other. Similarity statement, I've just got to put them in order. I'm going to just say that triangle over here on the left, you could call it three different ways. I'm going to call it RXS. Then I'll put my similarity symbol in between them. And then I just got to make sure I get my letters in the right order. RXS goes from 2 to 3 to 1. So over here I have to go 2, th two to 3 to 1. That'd be WTS. There's our similarity statement. And then the last part they want is the explanation. The explanation can just be one of these theorems up here. We have AA similarity. <clears throat> That's one way they could present things to you. All right, let's take a look at another. Um, same exact, uh, same exact directions. Determine if the triangles are similar. If they are, write a similarity statement and explain your reasoning. And this time our picture looks like this. We have triangle ACB. And then kind of cutting through the middle of it here, we have segment EF. And they're going to give us some lengths. AE is 8. EC is 4, AF is 10, and FB is 5. And we're going to try to figure out if the triangles are similar. Now, the two triangles that we're talking about, we have a little one on top, triangle AEF, and we have a big triangle, ACB. Those are the two triangles we're trying to figure out if they're similar. Now, when you look at those two triangles, the little triangle has a top angle of A, and the big triangle also has a top angle of A. So they both share angle A, so I'm going to mark that congruent to itself. Both triangles share angle A, so angle A is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. Then the other thing we've got to do is see if the corresponding sides are proportional. We've got a set of congruent angles, now let's check the sides. So what I'm going to do when I set up my, uh, uh, my ratios here is I'm going to put the small triangle numbers on top and I'm going to put the big triangle numbers on the bottom. You don't have to set it up this way. This is just the way I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to start with the small triangle. If you look at the small triangle, left-hand side is 8. Now I'm going to go to the big triangle. And you have to be careful when you do this. The small triangle's left-hand side was 8. If you look at the big triangle, its left-hand side is this entire length right here. It's 8 plus 4. 8 plus 4 is 12. And if you reduce that, 8 over 12 reduces to 2 thirds. We have one set of sides that have a ratio of 2 to 3. Let's do the same thing with this right-hand side. I'm going to set it up the same way. Small numbers, or small triangle numbers on top, big number triangles. Uh, big triangles numbers on the bottom. This time I'm going to use the right hand side. Right hand side of the little triangle is 10. And then same thing, the big triangle on the bottom, the right hand side would be the entire segment. 10 plus 5 is 15. If you reduce that, again you get 2 thirds. Those have the same ratio. So we've shown we have a set of uh, two sets of sides that have the same ratio. That means they're proportional. And we have the angle in between them so these triangles are going to be similar by side angle side similarity. I guess I need to answer first of all, are they similar? The answer would be yes. They're similar by side angle side similarity. 
And then the last thing they want is the similarity statement where we put our letters in order. I'm going to call the top triangle AEF. And then when I name the big triangle, I got to do it in the same order. So I got to go from top to bottom to right. That would be ACB. All right, one last thing I need to show you. This time we're not going to have to do all this. They're just going to make it real simple. They're going to tell us to find x. And they're going to give us a picture. It's going to be similar to that one we just did. Kind of have a segment cutting through the middle. Label them vertices A, B, C, D, E. Uh, we're going to have another set of parallel lines. These two are parallel. And the X they want us to find is going to be segment B, E. And they're going to give us some numbers to go with it. A, B is going to be 3. This entire length here is 5. Segment AC is 5. CD is going to be 3.5. And DE is 3. And from there, we need to find X. <clears throat> now, before I go about finding X, what I want to do is, first of all, make sure the triangles are similar. We have two triangles here. We've got a little one on the left, and then the entire thing is the big one. And the little one and the big one share angle A, just like they did on that last problem. And then since these lines are parallel, we could do uh, the alternate, no, corresponding angles. Let's go with corresponding. These corresponding angles would be congruent to each other also. And that right there would give me angle-angle similarity to tell me the triangles are similar. Now, they didn't ask for that. That's just kind of the, the thinking that goes behind this. We know the triangles are similar by angle-angle similarity. Now, once the triangles are similar, now we can set up a proportion because their sides will be proportional. And we can do the proportion to find x, just like we did last, uh, last section, 7, 2. Now, <clears throat> Got to do it once again, kind of got to think this through. I'm going to keep the numbers from the little triangle on top and the numbers from the big triangle on the bottom. You don't have to do it this way. This is just kind of help me with my thinking as I set it up. So there's several different ways you could set up the proportion. This is just one of them. Since x is on, uh, x is what we're looking for, and it's on the little triangle, I'm going to keep it over here, or I'm going to keep it on top with the little triangle. And I'm going to match it up to its big triangle side. X is the right-hand side of the little triangle. It's going to match up to the right-hand side of the big triangle, 3.5. And again, since the X is from the little triangle, I'm keeping it on top. 3.5 is from the big triangle, so I'm putting it on the bottom. And then I need another set of corresponding sides. If you look at your little triangle, we only have one other side here. They give us this side, this uh, kind of the top side is 3. Since it's from the little triangle, I'm going to keep it on top. And then on the big triangle, I want that top side. The side that would match up with 3 would be the entire top, which is 5. Since it's from the big triangle, I'm putting it on the bottom. So little triangle numbers on top, big triangle numbers on the bottom. Once you're to here, once again, just cross multiply. 5x, 5 times x is 5x. 3 times 3 and a half get the calculator going here, that's 10.5. And if you divide both sides by 5, that's going to be 2.1. And once again, don't be surprised if you get decimals for answers. That does happen quite a bit. All right, that gets us through section 3. So the rest of the time today, we have to work on a couple of different things. Here is your packet for chapter 7. 
Uh, let's see, we did that. Here is the uh, book assignment out of your book, page uh, 473. These problems here, the answers for those are on Google Classroom, so you can check it while you go. And then when you finish that, we got the 7-3 practice worksheet. Again, the answers for this are in Google Classroom, so you can check them while you go. And that worksheet is this one right here. And there's just one side to it. And the back of this is actually the study guide that we're going to do later on. So the worksheet all I do is just this one side.